Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through the spicy hot recipe for building a stock bottom end LS. This is a Gen 4 engine, and essentially this will be this one was built for boost. Uh, we're hoping for six to 700 wheel horsepower out of it. So I will take you through essentially all the parts you need to buy for the engine and all the pricing as well. So that includes things like deleting the VVT, deleting the displacement on demand, uh, lots of you will notice I still have the wrong cover on here. I'm still waiting for that one in the mail um, But I'll go through things like ring gaps uh, Essentially all the parts you need to buy all the pricing of all the parts And yeah, I'm hoping to make this just a one-stop shop where if you don't know what to buy for your engine Just buy these parts put them in you'll be well on your way to six to eight hundred wheel horsepower with the right turbo setup Thanks for checking it out as always and let's get to it all right, so starting on the bottom end, uh, typically do new crank and rod bearings just for fun. These are super cheap. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll use plastic gauge and I would say nine times out of 10, you won't have to do any machining. Everything will be in spec. So I wouldn't be too worried about this step. All right, the most critical part of this bottom end is the ring gap. Uh, you'll need one of these grinding tools you can get on Amazon to gap the rings. It makes things a lot easier. And really what you're doing is you're making sure that when the engine heats up, there's enough ring gap in it so that the rings uh, ends don't butt together and blow out a ring land. So on a six liter, the number that I use is 27 thou for a typical application. If you're doing like a max effort six liter type of thing where you wanna make 800 plus wheel, I'd probably shoot for 30 thou. I always just gap the top and bottom ring the same. You see people will argue about a couple thou difference. Well, the reality is with your feeler gauges at home, you're probably not measuring the ring gap within a thousandth of an inch anyways. So shoot for 27 to 30 and you'll be happy on a six liter. It's also worth noting, I'm just using standard run of the mill Hastings Pistons rings here. Nothing fancy, nothing expensive because this is a stock bottom end and you probably don't want to spend a ton of money. Over to the camshaft and related items, uh, I'm using the Sloppy Stage 2 Elgin E1840P. This is a wicked cam if you're NA or if you're boosted. On Cathedral Ports of my Mustang at 3,000 pounds on garbage Chinese tires with this cam, I went 1180s. So on a radial, I'd probably be down to something like an 1150. Uh, turbo, I was making 640 wheel on my Camaro with this. Lots of people make this much power or more. Uh, hoping for 800 wheel my Mustang with this cam. So if you're having any doubts about a camshaft to buy, just buy this one and you'll be happy. Yes, it chops really good. Also related to the camshaft stuff, you'll need for sure one of these uh, cam thrust plates. Uh, I use a Felpro one usually or the OEM GM, whichever you can find. If you don't do this, you could potentially have low oil pressure. Now, obviously switching out of the VVT stuff, you will need a non-VVT timing chain and gear set, which I will go through later. Now here you'll need to make sure that you have the right cam trigger to go with the proper crank trigger. A couple other things here, uh, you'll notice this little timing chain damper, this rubber thing here, use the LS2 timing chain damper. I would not recommend running the, um, the kind of spring-loaded factory tensioner. And actually, if you're using a Gen 3 engine, you can get a trick flow kit that will bolt on here and allow you to use this LS2 timing chain damper. On the spring side of things, uh, I only really use these PAC 1218 springs. So if you want to make seven, 800 wheel, just buy these. They work with the sloppy stage 2 cam. They're cheap. They're easy to get. They're easy to put in. On the head gasket side of things, I always use the LS9 head gasket and I always pair that up with ARP head bolts. You can use stock bolts, a lot of people reuse them. There's a lot of success there, but if you want a surefire, you don't have to think about it. You can reuse them, just get ARP bolts. They're pretty cheap. And just know that there's a difference between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 ARP bolts. Over on the power adder side of things, uh, I would recommend the 7875 to everybody who has a car that is mostly a street car and wants to go to the track and run some high nine second passes. So you'll make about you know, six to 700 wheel horsepower out of this turbo, but it is absolutely capped mid 600s. So you'll start to run into back pressure issues. Um, now, if you have something that is more of a track car uh, that you don't care if it spools as soon, get this big dog that I got here, the S480. Now this turbo is good to about a thousand wheel horsepower. I'm hoping to make 800 on E85 with it. And this one spools up a lot higher. 
but you will not have the same type of back pressure issues at high RPM, high load situations, which means that it's going to absolutely scream and mile an hour like nuts on the track. Alrighty, over here now on our Rock Auto parts list, in no particular order, here are some of the parts that I would use here. So uh, oil pump, Melling 10355, that is the high volume pump. Uh, it works very good. Um, some people will argue that, but I would just buy that one if I was you. Camshaft bearings, I've heard these engine tech bearings for the cam, the uh, connecting rods and the crank are actually the same as King's. I don't know if that's true, but I heard it from a pretty reputable source. Uh, oil pump again. Sorry, I have two on there. Don't get that one. Uh, piston rings, you can see here, they're just a standard Hastings part number. Uh, camshaft thrust plate again, Felpro number. Uh, lifters here, I like a Melling lifter. You can use an OEM GM as well. They're very good. Uh, timing chain damper, this is the LS2 one. There's the Cloy's number. Okay, uh, timing chain wise, this is the one we're using here. It's this Cloy's number. It is a three bolt uh, that will fit your cam and it is a four sensor hub, which means it's a four X. So that's what you would use for a gen four right there where you're doing a VVT delete. Uh, lastly, head gaskets here. I go OEM, uh, GM usually LS9 head gasket. You'll see our grand total here, $867 Canadian, which is probably around 500 bucks US. Um, you can definitely save money on this pump. Uh, a lot of people will just get like a stock pump or they'll just reuse their stock pump. If your stock pump is in fine shape, then there's no point of getting this. Uh, so if you get rid of the pump, you can obviously save yourself quite a bit of money. I have a second pump there, so I will get rid of that. Um, but overall, I mean, without the pump, you're looking at about 600 bucks. So obviously any engine that you can put $600 Canadian or maybe $400 US into and make, you know, close to a thousand flywheel is pretty substantial. So as always guys, thanks for checking out the channel. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know below, but I hope this video helps act as kind of a guide to what do I buy? Just buy this. Thanks for watching guys. We will see you on the next one.